So yesterday I posted a video where the Miami Heat get Larry Markkinen, but I still got my eyes on the prize. Hey! There is one problem though, it would be the New York Knicks. Okay, well, 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 two problems, the Oklahoma City Thunder as well. Uh, okay, three problems, the Brooklyn Nets also, and pretty much every other team in NBA because they all have more assets than the Miami Heat. I mean, right now, the Brooklyn Nets have five tradable first round picks. The New York Knicks have seven tradable first round picks. And the Oklahoma City Thunder, well, they have too many picks to count, but I did it anyways. And they have 11 tradable first round picks. Now the Miami Heat, well, they only have two. Yeah. And technically it's only one because the 2024 pick, they can't technically trade until after the pick is made. But we know how that goes. The Heat could have a side deal where they would be drafting for whatever team they're about to trade that player to. But there is a silver lining, Heat fans. Well, two silver linings. And that would be Nikola Jovic and Jame Jaquez. Two young players who are both very versatile and look like they could be future stars in this NBA. But here's the thing though, Heat fans. Tyler Hero is an inevitable piece to be moved in any deal that he tried to make for a whale. And in this specific case for Donovan Mitchell, I don't think the Cavaliers would be super interested in Tyler Hero because if they already have a lot of questions about their backcourt of Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell, I don't think the fit with Darius Garland and Tyler Hero is much better. And we heard the same thing last year, Heat fans, when it came to Donovan Mitchell. Half my comments back then were Portland fans saying, oh, we don't want Tyler Hero. He don't fit next to Scoot and Shaden Sharp and Anthony Simons. And I would tell those same Portland fans, you should get whatever you can because your team sucks. But that's not the point of this video. The good news is though, Heat fans, that is why three team trades exist. Now, my biggest concern is I don't quite know what Tyler Hero's contract is now. I mean, he gets paid a ton of money especially for a guy that we know can't really be a first option, but he's still a pretty great player and a true three-level scorer, which is still rare, but very valuable in today's NBA. So while it is a difficult contract to trade because it's so big, I do believe Tyler Hero is at least worth one first round pick, which could obviously help the Heat in their quest to land Donovan Mitchell. And before you see these trades, I just wanna say that contrary to popular belief, I am not a Tyler Hero hater. In fact, I love Tyler Hero. I mean, it's not like the guy cost me a ton of money on my parlays last year. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Odds Jam, along with your player spotlight of the game in Tyler Hero. And with that, off we go on another Miami Heat NBA adventure. Hero coming down the court, waves off Bam, calls for ISO, uses the Bam screen, wants to clear out, back around the Bam screen, crosses around the screen and pulls for three. Kaboom! Tyler Hero cuts the deficit to 36 points as he screams, I'm him! I knew I shouldn't have taken the Heat money line. After all, Odds Jam told me not to, and they are the ultimate ally in data-driven wagering. With over 260 sports books under its belt, Odds Jam is the go-to platform for savvy bettors. And here's how it works. Odds Jam's arbitrage tool scans the market in real time to find differences in betting lines across various sports books. This means that you can lock in risk-free bets by betting both sides of the market. But that's not all. Odds Jam also provides a positive EV calculator to optimize your bets and a handy bet tracker to help monitor your profits. By using Odds Jam, you're not just betting smarter, you're betting more responsibly, increasing your long-term profitability. But here's the kicker. They are now offering a seven-day free trial. Ready to give it a shot? Use code Anthony to get 35% off your first month. Secure your bets with confidence and make informed decisions using Odds Jam. Make sure y'all subscribe because I'm on the grind to 5K subs by the start of next season and like the video so Odds Jam knows that we got the best community on YouTube. I appreciate y'all. Moving on to the first trade, the one that I like the most, but it also might be the most realistic. It's with the Orlando Magic who are sending over Joe Ingles, Mo Wagner, and one first round pick in exchange for Tyler Hero. Now, the good thing about Joe Ingles is he's essentially an expiring contract, has an $11 million team option. Now, he's a bit older, He's 36, but he still contributed enough for the Magic last year. Played 68 games, 17 minutes a night, 
but he could still shoot his ass off. Got two attempts up a game last year and shot it at a 44% clip. But we know that dude is a sniper. I mean, back in his heyday with the Utah Jazz, he was elite in that corner. And I think that's something that he could still kind of get to. And if he was to come to the Heat and the Heat would use him, which I think they probably could. I mean, he's 6'9", and that's, you know, like our second tallest player, essentially. We know Spo loves to run his offense with the five out, have a guy in the corner like he did with P.J. Tucker, and that really helps open up the floor for your guys like Jimmy and Bam. So I do think Joe Ingles could contribute quite a bit, and he was also a very good defender in his prime, could switch, had high defensive IQ, at his current stage, you know, of his life and his career, uh, I don't know if the athletic capabilities are still there to be as good as a defender as he once was, but I think he's a guy that can maybe be the 10th or 11th guy off the bench and just give you some more depth if guys get hurt. So I do actually think he could play a little bit on this Heat team. Now, Mo Wagner, he's also an expiring contract, has an $8 million team option, which is good news because you don't want to really break any, uh, bring on any contracts that are going to keep you hard cap for years to come. Uh, so that's a pretty nice deal for Mo Wagner there. He is in the prime of his career, I'd say, 27 years old, very healthy, 80 games last year for the Orlando Magic, but only played 17 minutes a night. And that's because the, the Magic have such great front court depth between Franz and Paolo and Jonathan Isaac and Wendell Carter Jr. So I think Mo Wagner is a guy that could probably play 25 minutes a night here. He's just that talented. Because even in 17 minutes with the Magic last year, the man averaged 11 points and four boards on 60% shooting. He scored 11 points a night in 17 minutes. His per 36 numbers are incredible. And on top of all of that, he shot 33% from three last year on one and a half attempts. So not anything that stands out at you, but he's a guy that can certainly stretch the floor. Guys have to respect him out there. The defense has to keep him honest, which is obviously critical in this heat system because Jimmy and Bam, you're not looking at those guys to take a lot of threes, of course. But he also provides some size. He is a true 6'11", and obviously this heat team needs depth in, in the, the size aspect. I just posted a three-part series where... I'm looking everywhere for the Heat to get a big man via trade, via free agency, via the draft. I don't care how they do it. The Heat team just needs some size, and Mo Wagner would be one way to get that. Now, for the Magic perspective here, Tyler Hero is someone they could use greatly because we know they have trouble scoring, and Tyler Hero is still an absolute bucket in the playoffs last season. The Magic's main starter was Gary Harris. He was only averaging six points per game. And he's turning 30 years old next season, so he doesn't exactly fit their timeline either. Now, Jalen Suggs was their other, you know, starter guard. He's legit. He's awesome. But he also is, he's a very good defender, and they rely on him a ton for that. So having a guy like Tyler Hero to kind of take some of the scoring load off him, I think would be, would be very helpful. And I do think a backcourt of Suggs and Hero is a very, very nice fit there. Now, the Magic do essentially have cap space to absorb Tyler Hero outright, so they don't even have to send over the contracts of Joe Ingles and Mo Wagner. Uh, but I do think this is a relatively equal trade when it comes to value for both those squads. Trade number two I have is with the Chicago Bulls, who will be sending over Nikola Vucevic and one first round pick in exchange for Tyler Hero. Now, Vucevic is looked at as a negative asset at this point because his contract is a monster. He's getting $20 million this season and $21 million next season. He is 33 years old, but he has been able to stay relatively healthy. His last four seasons, he's played over 70 games. That's something that I'm looking for when it comes to guys I want on the Heat because I think people will call them the hospital Heat last year because they had the most games, missed the injury out of anyone. That's a huge reason I don't want the other Chicago Bull in trade talks, Zach Levine, because that dude gets paid a lot of money and he can't stay healthy. So although Bulls fans aren't super high on Nikola Vucevic, at least he's a guy that can still, still stay healthy and contribute a little bit. Averaged 18 and 10 last year with three assists. So he's a guy that I think would be a great contributor to this offense. And he did shoot 48% from the field, which is good, but he was at 29% from three, which is the big reason that Bulls fans are so down on him because that's way down from his 35% uh, from three the previous season. 
and even a couple years before that he was at like 40 percent back when he was with the magic he was really a guy that could knock it down unfortunately it seemed like those high shooting seasons were more of a fluke but he's still getting up four games so just like mo wagner he's a guy that the defense has the defense has to at least go out to which i do think is very important in this heat system and he's one of the biggest heat killers of all time so at least getting him off the heat would get him off the opponents but he does provide a skill set that this team needs which is rebounding regardless of everything else he is still an elite rebounder now there's some other variations of this trade that could work maybe the bulls give us two first round picks because essentially they have to give a first round pick just to offload Vooch's contract and they might give another first round pick for the asset of tyler hero or they could somehow throw in Alex Caruso, which is a name we've heard a lot. It's a guy that obviously would fit great on this Heat team. Or maybe they do try to work something out with Zach Levine and we send over more contracts like Duncan Robinson. But I want to stay away from Levine as far as possible. I'll probably make a full video about that one day. But this is a trade that I also like for the Miami Heat. Trade number three I have is with the Brooklyn Nets who send over Dorian Finney-Smith, Dennis Schroeder, and one first round pick in exchange for Tyler Hero. Now, Dorian Finney-Smith, he makes $15 million this year with a $15 million player option next year. So it's possible he acts as an expiring. I'm kind of unsure if he would decline that player option or not because he is 31 years old. So declining that player option would allow him to resign for a four-year deal, which would put him at 35. But I'm not sure if Finney Smith could command more than $15 million next season on the open market because he didn't have a spectacular season last year. He averaged 9-5 and five on 42% shooting and 35% from three on five attempts. But he did have multiple seasons prior to that where he was at 40% from three. So his production has kind of dropped off a little, but there is still the hope that he can get back to that 40% three-point shooter. And again, he's also elite in the corners, just like Joe Ingles. So he's someone that would fit pretty seamlessly into this Heat offense. He would also fit great into this Heat defense because he is still a very capable switchy defender, which is something that Spolstra absolutely loves. I also do like Dennis Schroeder because he has a $13 million expiring, so that would be a lot of money coming off the books. He's 30 years old, so right in his prime. Had a nice year last year between Toronto and Brooklyn, where he averaged 14 and 6, and he shot 43% from the field and a great 37% from three. Not really known as a three-point shooter, but obviously by the numbers last year, he's shown that he's a guy that can still knock it down. And just like Finney Smith, he's a solid defender. He's not switchable or nothing like that, but he does like to hound the other team's opposing guards. He can be a, a pest on that end. And that I think is something that's very important for the Heat, especially if we'd be losing a lot of our perimeter defense in Haywood Highsmith and Caleb Martin, because I don't know if we can afford to resign those guys. And we already lost Gabe Vincent and Victor Oladipo the year before. You gotta bring back in some guards who can play defense and Dennis Schroeder can do that. Now, from the Nets perspective, they're getting some value for a couple likely expiring contracts and just Tyler Hero fits their timeline much better because right now that team is what Mikel Bridges Cam Thomas and nothing else like I, you could say there's some fit questions between Cam Thomas and Tyler Hero but I don't I'm not personally sold on Cam Thomas he could score 40 points one night five points the next night and I don't think Cam Thomas should be the reason the Nets decline to make any other upgrades because I don't think they should be sold on him either but Hero obviously fits the timeline much better than the two guys they're sending out who are both over 30 years old. Plus, the Nets will probably spend a lot of money to resign Nick Claxton. He can't shoot super great either. You're going to need the spacing with Tyler Hero. I just overall feel like Hero is a nice piece that could bring that team some scoring. And I do like what the Miami Heat would be receiving as well. And finally, the fourth trade that I have here is a bit different from the other ones. And it's with the Detroit Pistons who are sending over nobody but two first round picks in exchange for Tyler Hero. Now, if you look at the Pistons cap situation next year, they're not paying anyone. Their highest paid player is Evan Fournier, another random scrub, heat killer, Hall of Famer. But even his 19 million is on a team option, which they will likely decline, which means that their highest paid player is Isaiah Stewart at 15 million, which is nothing. So obviously they could sort of absorb Tyler Hero's contract into their books, no problem. And they don't really have any players that I would love anyways. I mean, I would take Isaiah Stewart to provide some rebounding. I like Jaden Ivey if the, the Pistons think they have too much guard depth with Tyler. 
But truthfully, I'm cool just taking the picks. And I'll take those two first round picks that now we could send the Cleveland four first round picks for Donovan Mitchell. And I do think that would be a pretty enticing deal for them. But the reason that I think the Pistons would go for this and give up the extra first round pick that these teams wouldn't is because they could probably use Tyler Hero more than any of the other teams, right? Because this is their depth chart as according to ESPN right now. Is Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey in the backcourt? A Sir Thompson at the three and Fontecchio. That guy's a heat killer too. If y'all remember that boy Fontecchio back in Utah, but they got uh, Simone at the four and then they got Jalen Duran at the five. Now Fontecchio is even a free agent. So they might not keep him anyways, but they could start Isaiah Stewart there who is, well, well Fontecchio is a great shooter. Isaiah Stewart is okay. But outside of whoever they fill in that four spot, they have no shooting, or at least not great shooting in the starting lineup. Because in your backcourt, Cade and Jaden Ivey, those guys aren't really known for shooting the three ball. They're both at 33% last season. So they're capable, no disrespect, but nobody's looking at those guys as a shooter. Then you go to a Sir Thompson. I know it was his rookie season, but he shot 19% from three. And then Jalen Duran shot a whopping 0% from three. Shot like six in his career, never made one. So obviously, he's not a factor out there as well. But Tyler Hero, he is elite from the three-point line and from the mid-range. From three last year, he was 39% on, over, on almost eight attempts. And that's about his career average as well. So he's a guy that is truly lethal from behind the arc. So Detroit could use him from a play style wise. They need scoring, particularly in the guard position. And also they're the Detroit Pistons. I mean, they could use some experience and also someone that fits the timeline. And I do think Tyler Hero does both of those things because he's a guy that's been to the playoffs multiple times. He's been to the NBA finals. He's had big games in the Eastern Conference finals, but he's still only like, what, 24 years old. So they could still sort of build around him in a future backcourt of Cade Cunningham and Tyler Hero. I don't really think that's the worst thing in the world. Now, those are the four most realistic spots I could see Tyler Hero landing. I literally went through every team's roster and tried to put together a trade. And it just so happens that the four I picked were in the East. Some teams in the West intrigued me, but for one reason or another, I didn't really think it made sense. The Thunder, for example, they have the cap space to absorb Tyler Hero, but I don't know if they'd want him. Would they send back Josh Giddy because they, they he's on a team option? So they're going to probably lose him next season anyways because they don't want to pay him. But they also got Isaiah Joe. So would they start Tyler Hero over Isaiah Joe? Isaiah Joe is legit one of the best shooters ever, right? Over 40% on high volume. So I just don't know if the Thunder would want Tyler Hero. The Kings, I think he would fit really nice with, especially if they do lose Malik Monk. But they're over the salary cap, and I don't really see the matching, the matching contracts they could send over while also giving us a first-round pick. And a lot of the young teams, I don't see a fit with either because the Rockets got Jalen Green, the Jazz got Sexton and Keontae George, the Spurs got Devin Vassell. Plus, I mean, they should take, Tyler Hero could fit there, but they should be more focused on getting a true point guard. And I don't think that's Tyler Hero. And obviously the, the Portland Trailblazers, they don't want Tyler Hero. We've been through this same thing last season. So that's really all I got to say for this video. Let me know which one of these four trades you like the most, or do you think there's another deal out there that could make sense for the Miami Heat? So make sure to like the video and subscribe and comment because all that stuff helps helps the algorithm push this out and i greatly appreciate it shout out to oz jam that's linked down below and tomorrow if i get it done in time i have another very exciting video plan with a guy whose name may or may not rhyme with schmadam try i'll see y'all next time peace out Look, pull up in the city, tryna get that dead face. face Do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight right. Had to kill him off, yeah, I need a headspace You know this homegrown bitch, don't a fan, mate hmm.